activate. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. See, it's one thing to follow the Word of God on Sunday. I mean, when you come to church and you see me dressed up in this, in this suit, don't you think, wow, what a righteous man. And if I have, you know, and, and people who have really big Bibles, don't, wow, what a great Christian. Um, because the bigger the Bible, the better the Christian. You know that, don't you? I mean, that's just a principle. And, we, and so this idea is that we, we have these, these ideas that we can believe certain things and we come to church on Sunday and we believe certain things. But what happens on Tuesday and Wednesday? You know, I, I, I often think and I find myself praying for Brian and we have a few other truck drivers in, in, in our class. Brian's out there driving and I think, listen, I've been to restrooms and truck stops and uh, I, I, I think, what a, what a life this guy's got to live you know, during the week. And he's dealing with people in a whole different lifestyle than what happens here on Sunday morning. At least I think happens here on Sunday morning. And that's a whole different world. And he's got to shift gears because it's easy to be a Christian when you're around other Christians. It's not easy when you're around non-Christians. It's not easy. And one of the reasons it's not easy is because they don't know God's ways. Or if they do know God's ways, they're in rebellion against him. So what Paul is saying in Romans is that those who know these things and continue to rebel against God, they are, they are coming under the condemnation of God. Now, we've been warned, by the way, that this is going to happen. There's going to be this persecution, if you will, against followers of God. It's in 1 John 3, verses 11 through 13. It says this, For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was the, uh, of the evil one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil, and his brother's righteous. He justified his action by his own sense of truth. Verse 13, do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. Because their perception of you is based on their concept of truth. And notice this amazing insight. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. That means you. You're going to come under some sort of persecution. It may not be the horrible persecution where you're beheaded because of your faith or crucified or whatever. But there is going to be some people who come against you because of what you believe, because their truth is in opposition to your truth. So don't be surprised. Bible says. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Verse 13, while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse. Stop right there. They're going to go on and it's going to get worse. I wish I could tell you that it's going to get better, but it's not going to get better until Christ comes back. So evil people and imposters, well, evil people we can understand. Who are the imposters? People who pretend to be followers of Christ and aren't. People who pretend to be righteous but are quite unrighteous. So while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, listen to this, deceiving, and get this, and being deceived. Do you see what's happening in the world today? The deceived continue to be deceived, and they begin to deceive, and then they become more deceived. And it becomes this vicious cycle of the deceiving, deceiving, the deceiving. And that continues, and it, and it builds, and it festers, and it becomes this ugly uh, 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 tornado, essentially, that just keeps going around and around and around, and people keep being deceived, and the deceived keep being deceived. And they think they're in the truth. 
They think they have truth. They think they have this concept and this knowledge of truth, but the, but the reality of it is that they are deceived. They are deceiving others, and they continue to be deceived. They don't know that they're being deceived. They think it's truth. So, um, this concept of, of, of being deceived is, is really important for the Christian. No truth. Hold to truth instead of being deceived or being a deceiver. And really, even in the very last days, this is going to continue, and we're told how it's going to continue in the face of such persecution. In Revelation, in Revelation chapter 22, beginning with verse 10, and he said to me, this is John receiving the word, he said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book. In other words, hold to the truth of the word of God. Hold to the truth of the word of God. Verse 11, let the evildoer still do evil and the filthy still be filthy and the righteous still do right and the holy still be holy. Right there is the answer of how we handle all of this. When there are those who come against us because of what we believe and what we understand to be truth, what do we do? Instead of fighting back, our job is to continue being righteous. Righteousness, remember, righteous is doing the things that you do because you are right with God. Righteousness is the acts, A-C-T-S, the acts of holiness. That's what righteous is, righteousness. It's the things you do because you are set aside for God's purpose. And so the righteous are to continue being righteous. You're to continue doing the holy acts of God. And the holy are still holy. Holy means set aside for God's purposes. And so you are to continually be doing the righteous deeds, the, right, the acts of God, and you are to continue understanding that you are set aside for God's purposes. That's your calling. Don't let the deceived get you off your mark. Don't let them turn your head. Don't, listen to this, don't let them draw your attention away to them. Your focus isn't on the ones who are persecuting. Your focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are focusing on the trouble, the troublemakers, the problems then you're not focusing on the Lord. Our focus is to be on our calling. God defines you not by the trouble you go through, but by your ministry. You are not defined by the circumstances and the problems in your life. You are defined by the ministry of your life, what God has destined and designed you to accomplish. That's how you're defined. When God sees you, he doesn't see somebody who's going through a whole bunch of problems and troubles and difficulties and, and losses in life. He doesn't see that. He sees somebody who is called, destined, designed for his purposes and his plan. That's what he sees. That's how he defines you. How does God see you? How does he see you? On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Book,